In the 16th century, it was common practice for nations to have a prestige flagship of great size. Although notionally powerful on paper, these vessels could sometimes actually be relatively rare on the field of battle, either due to the risk of their loss, or simply their sheer size relative to other ships, making them somewhat difficult to operate as part of a fleet. For the Kingdom of England in the mid-16th century, this vessel had been the Henri Grasse à Dieu, or more commonly the Great Harry, built for Henry VIII in response to the Scottish Great Michael. But in 1553, at age almost 40, the huge ship caught fire and sank, leaving England in need of a new flagship. Thus, in 1557, towards the end of the reign of Mary I, a new ship was laid down, to be named for the monarch as was the emerging tradition. But Mary died the next year in 1558, and her sister ascended the throne as Queen Elizabeth I. Thus, the vessel would be renamed on the stocks, becoming the first Royal Navy ship to be named for a Queen Elizabeth. Launched in 1559, according to the records of the time, she was launched with a great shooting of guns and casting of fire all about made for pleasure, possibly a reference to early use of fireworks. The account goes on to relate that the ship was named by the Queen in remembrance of being preserved from her enemies no less miraculously than was the prophet Jonas from the belly of the whale. That account being better known to us as the biblical book of Jonah, uh, the name of the ship was thus the Elizabeth Jonas. As built, she was rated at 855 tonnes burthen, which meant a displacement, as we would understand it, of roughly 1,200 tonnes, with a 100-foot long keel and as built, four masts. She was something of a hybrid, being built with the towering fore and after castles of a traditional galleon, but also with a heavy, if somewhat eclectic, set of guns. By 1588 and the time of the Spanish Armada, when she was placed under the command of Sir Robert Southwell, she was listed as carrying three cannon of seven, six demi-cannon, eight culverin, nine demi-culverin, nine sakers, one minion, and 20 small anti-personnel guns, for a total of 56 guns, of which 36 were the larger anti-shipping weapons. The overall broadside being just over 300 pounds of shot, although it should be remembered that at this time, a ship's largest guns were often positioned fore and aft, with gunnery tactics not being the line of battle, as it would be later on, but rather a circular carousel motion with the guns from all parts of the ship firing in sequence, the turn, in theory, taking long enough that the first guns to fire should be reloaded by the time the ship comes back around. Prior to the Armada, her only significant service seems to have been in 1563, when she was part of the fleet that tried to relieve the French siege of Le Havre, unsuccessfully, although the fleet was then able to evacuate the garrison. The policy of positioning the biggest and most destructive weapons in the bow was incidentally why the embattled Jesus of Lübeck was able to inflict such destruction in its final battle. However, whilst the Elizabeth Jonas was a solid presence in the English fleet during the defeat of the Spanish Armada and in subsequent operations, the greater agility and speed of ships like the Revenge meant that in 1597 she was taken into dock for rebuilding into a race-built vessel, with much lower fore and after castles, but presumably with some additional work done to her hull, since when she was relaunched a year later she'd increased in displacement by about 100 tonnes despite losing all of that top weight. The records indicate that the elderly queen wished to see the relaunch of her ship, but for various reasons was not able to make it. The shift towards a more gunnery-oriented fleet can be seen from her new armament. While she still carried her three cannon of seven, the rest of the battery was now only two demi-cannon, but 18 culverin, 13 demi-culverin, 19 sakers, and only three anti-personnel guns. This was now a gun battery of 58 in total, but 55 of them were anti-shipping weapons the majority of these being the far more expensive and longer-range culverin and demi-culverin. It seems most likely, from the significant increase in large guns and the aforementioned increase in displacement, that she'd probably become a two-decker. 
In this revised guise, she served alongside the Dutch in the Channel against the Spanish as the century moved to a close, but by the time the, of the new king, James I, in 1603, she seems to have been moved into reserve. By 1606, she was moored near Rochester and was employed as a floating royal feasting hall, and although remaining on the books as a large and powerful ship, by 1618 the long period of inactivity had seen her rot away, and she would be condemned and broken up that same year at the dockyards in Woolwich. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.